Hey everybody, this is Scott over at TheVersatileGuitarist.com. Have you ever noticed how bass players, when they don't play with a pick, they look just like Spanish guitar, flamenco, or classical players playing with these two fingers? That's because they are doing exactly the same thing, alternating the index and middle fingers. This is a great way to get speed for scale type phrases on the bass and of course on the guitar. And in this video, I want to show you how to play this technique that we call picado and give you three great exercises to help you master it. So let's check out this technique called picado. And by the way, if you want to learn those two riffs that I played at the beginning, the bass riff from Rapper's Delight and the main theme from To The Night by Otmar Liebert, I'll put those up on the screen at the end of this video. But right now, let's get into this technique that we call picado. This is index and middle, strictly alternating like this. Index, middle, index, middle. That's your fingers one and two, if you want to give them numbers, but we should only number the left hand fingers, not the right hand, right? Thumb is P, index is I, middle finger is M, ring finger is A, but in this video, we're only talking about index and middle, I and M. So we're just alternating two fingers, and it seems easy enough, but there's some important things to keep in mind here. We're doing rest strokes, and that means we're resting on the very next string. That helps us get volume and actually to gain some speed. We can bounce off that neighboring string. Whereas if we did free strokes, a free stroke is when we strike a string, but we don't hit or land on the neighboring string. We would do that if we were playing an arpeggio like this. And we certainly can play any piccolo type phrase doing free strokes, but rest strokes, resting on the next string, really allows us to get this propulsion into the next string and really straighten our fingers a little bit, get some volume out of it, and it really helps you play faster. My first study for you for working on this picado technique is to play on one string, no left hand, and play it staccato. So we're gonna go like this, index finger, lands on the next string, and as soon as you can, get your middle finger to silence and sit on the same string again. So we're gonna go like this, and there should be immediate silence. And just trade them. Now you're gonna hear other strings ring out. If you don't want them to do that, you could dampen them like this. But here we're just working on the technique. We don't care if other strings are ringing out unless we're doing this. If we make a mistake and cross strings and strum, you didn't, you didn't do a rest joke if that happened, so be careful of that. But if you get sympathetic vibrations from the strings and they're sounding, we don't care at all about that. So what we're doing here is what we call planting. We're getting to the string ahead of time and we can hear if we're doing it. So if you play like this, you know you're not doing it right now. You might be wondering, who cares? Why are we doing it and cutting the note off? But this is how we can get speed over time. So if you go like this and wait 10 minutes, you're still working on your speed because what you did was you immediately worked on this twitch motion and got the next finger down as quickly as it could. And if we can sustain that over time, we can get a lot faster. So what we're trying to do is this. Immediately kill the string. And easier said than done, you should do this a million times like that. And as you get better at this, you can start to throw a couple quick ones in there. And then over time, you'll be able to play a little bit faster. Now the master, not just of picado, but of all guitar in general, I think, or certainly flamenco guitar, Paco de Lucia, was one of the fastest, if not the fastest ever playing this technique. And if you listen to him play scales with this picado technique, you can almost hear these infinitesimally small little silences between the notes. So you can almost tell that he practiced in this way. So practicing this way makes the notes so much more distinct and clear. Now, if you play with a pick, you probably already know that crossing strings is one of the hardest things about playing the guitar, and it's no different when we play this piccolo technique. In fact, this alternation of index and middle takes the place of a pick, because with one finger, we can't go up and down. Uh, that's a little bit a uh, ham-handed way to do things. We can't be precise. So we're alternating these fingers as if we had a pick playing down and up strokes. Well, when you get good at this on one string, now it's time to cross strings, which is very problematic. The idea is to strictly alternate index, middle, index, middle, and to never disrupt that pattern. So if I play a little passage like this, I'm going index, middle, index, middle, talking about my right hand, index. Now my index, having done a rest stroke, is already on the next string, so why don't I just go past and play again with that finger? Well, that interrupts our alternation. So you can imagine if you're running a race and all of a sudden you skip a leg, that's really going to throw a monkey wrench into your momentum. So we're trying to avoid that if we can. What we would want to do in this case is index, middle, index, middle, index, and then middle, even though your index was already on that string. So that's the tough thing about crossing strings and continuing to get this I and M alternation. So our second study is to address this problem. What we're going to do is play three times per string towards the ceiling. So we have... That's all we're doing, but this is tough. And most students, when they start doing this, they're gonna go index, middle, and then drag the middle because it's already on that string. Do not do that. Just say to yourself, I am, I am. 
it's always gonna be alternating fingers, right? So we're going index, middle, index, middle, index, middle, index, middle. And don't stop, we want these to be completely even. Now, now if you go towards the floor, it's not as good of an exercise because we don't have the problem of our finger already being on a string where we need to play the next finger. So I would practice this just going to the ceiling over and over and over, don't go to the floor. Because if you can do it this way, then you don't have to worry about doing it the other direction. We should practice this with open strings, but you're only going to be as good as your left hand once you get this down because nobody wants to hear you do this all day long. So for our third and final piccolo study, let's involve the left hand, but now we're back to playing just one string so we can concentrate on that staccato silencing by immediately getting to the string with the next finger. Now this is going to be a great coordination exercise for your right and left hands too. If you're playing with a pick, you should also do this down and up strokes. What we're doing is open, first finger, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, that corresponds to those same numbered frets, and then just go up a fret with the open string in between every time. Watch. You can keep going if you have a cutaway and come back. We're going to go. Always silence the string with the next finger as quickly as you can. And again, we're talking about playing on one string. Work on these three studies, they're easy to remember, easy to memorize. It's just the idea of planting is the main thing. And what we're trying to do is to turn our right hand into a guitar pick like this. So anything that you might play with a pick that's fast, down and up strokes, try to use these two fingers instead. And you'll actually find that when you go back to a pick, you're even better at the pick because this is hard. If you want to see the tab for those two riffs at the beginning, let's do it. I hope this helps you clarify some things if you're playing nylon string guitar, classical flamenco, whatever, or even bass. You might not want to do this on a steel string guitar because you can kind of rip your nails up, but give it a shot. Plenty of people do do that. Thanks for watching and you can join my mailing list below. I'll send you some guitar tips, lessons, and free sheet music, and I'll see you in the next video.